Today's episode is one you certainly don't want to miss. We are taking questions about so many different players that I promise you one of them is someone you care about. But most importantly, the big reveal of Mike's Glamour Shot. Before we start today's show, I want to tell you about better help. And uh, if something's interfering with your happiness, look, this past year has been a uh, year plus <laughs> years, years plus I uh, have been a little bit different, uh, but one of the things that's come to the forefront has been mental health, and BetterHelp will help uh, assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and they do it in a modern way. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not self-help. It's not a crisis line. It is professional counseling done securely online, and there is a broad range of expertise available. Uh, and so you can check them out. Uh, it's very important and you can get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule a weekly video or phone session. You won't have the uncomfortable waiting room experience like traditional therapy. So you can check them out. Visit betterhelp.com slash footballers. That's better H E L P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 States. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Fantasy Footballers listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, June 24th, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. My voice is fine, gentlemen. Oh, yeah, mine too. Valley Oop! Valley Oop! You had a moment last night, Jason. Now, we're recording this late Wednesday for the Thursday episode, so welcome into the podcast. Lots to cover today, buy or sell, fantasy questions, a glamour shot reveal live Ooh. on the show. It's, uh, oh, it's covered up with a sheet. But Jason and I went to the game, and I think the, the most comments I saw when I shared a mm -hmm. picture of us going to the Suns playoff win yeah. uh, was, where is the hitman? Mm. I mean, that, where I, am I not? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> And the answer to that was at the game. Yeah, actually. I mean, you've been to a number of the games as well, but we weren't there together. Correct. And when people see a picture of just Jason and I, they, they there's a an absence. Some, some missing. Yeah. We're a three-pack. But you were busy just not getting the review replays right at home. Well, to be fair, I believe I was correct. Scott Foster disagreed. Yeah, I mean that that was that was wild because I was just telling you guys like you guys make fun of baseball all the time. Yeah, because it's stupid. Uh, <laughs> for reasons, I mean that's a simple kind of concise summation from Jason. I would call it eloquent, but go on. Uh, but and then there you've given more exhausting uh, explanations, which is what you would describe baseball as exhausting. But I've been complimenting like the NBA. I'm like these games. Like we go to the game. Yeah, I'm home early. It's quick. The, the yeah, pace get, is great. It's moving. They're getting it over with. And then Scott Foster, the NBA referee extraordinaire, came out and oh. said, "You know what? I'm going to make these 90 seconds last 35 minutes." He's got to get that FaceTime. Got to get the nation. The nation needs more Scott Foster. That's what he thinks. Referees in any sport should not be trending on Twitter. That's all I'm saying. Your job is to blend in. Mm -hmm. You're like the Brooks mm -hmm. out there. You should just. If you're doing your job, no one knows you're there. I can only name two NBA referees. <laughs> yeah. Scott Foster yeah. and, and Tim, Tim Donahue. Donahue. Yep. That's not good company. Oh, my goodness. If you would like to watch the show, you can do so on YouTube. And um, I will encourage you to head over there today. Because, yeah, because the glamour shot's going up. Yeah, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Glamorous. Mike lost our M NFL draft bet and therefore was required to produce a glamour shot for the back wall. Took some time. Uh, we do have it. I'm going to reveal it momentarily here. Uh, and then we're going to force somebody to accept it as a giveaway prize. <laughs> Mike is going to autograph it, and then we're going to give it away at footclangiveaway.com. You can go enter to win 
and uh, I'm going to reveal it right now. Oh. So uh, without further ado, if you're watching, congratulations. You get to enjoy this. If you're listening. Wait, are you getting up and revealing it? Or yeah, is... yeah, yeah, I am. All right. And if you are can, listening on the podcast, Jason, you need to talk yeah, us through got, and got, describe it. So here we go. Clean. All right. He is moving towards the sheet. He has taken it down, and there is... <laughs> Mike, the fantasy hitman, right in a Hawaiian style button up, buttoned down quite a bit, might I add. With You're missing a button there. Somehow he uh, would say I'm missing it. Amazingly, has a mullet grown with a headband and a classic look, <laughs> classic background of the glamour shot variety. Well the, done, Mike. It's kind of like the the, the magenta lasers. Um, he's glowing. I'm deep in thought. And it's it's a higher resolution than I'm comfortable with. Yeah, it's a I deep, mean, it's a there's, deep V. There's a lot of pixels. Yeah, yeah, it is a deep V right there. You gotta get that manscaped. <laughs> 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 so Mike's gonna throw his uh, John Hancock on there, and we're gonna ship it off. It's a Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock. Yeah. So FootClanGiveaway.com. Mike, you look spectacular. Thank I'm, you. I'm not sure how I feel about you in that pose directly above my head for the remainder of the show, but... Um, at least he's looking up and not down at you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's have ever, true. Have you ever looked at a photo of yourself and then got, like, that funny feeling inside? What, like are you you're falling in love? Attracted. <laughs> <laughs> you're no, just me? Okay. <laughs> you're attracted to yourself? <laughs> All right, three shows next week. Uh, the summer is over. We're going to three a week starting in July. Five. That's, that's impossible. I know. I know, Mike. Wow. Time is just... It's not real. Time, All right. Time is pretend. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow us there, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Buy or sell Terry McLaurin making the leap and finishing as a top 12 fantasy wide receiver in 2021. What do you say, cool, gentlemen? Man. Uh, I know. It, I think you'd both love to say yes, but I'm not sure what your real answer is. Yeah, we we all we all like Terry McLaurin. We all see a path where he could finish as a wide receiver one. The talent is there. He's shown flashes on the field, and and you hope now that the quarterback is there. There's a lot in the fantasy world. We hype up Fitz Magic, and we probably make him to be out uh, to to be more than he is for Terry McLaurin. But is he enough to produce a wide receiver one when you are combining that with the fact that this is a really good defense? Like, could be the best defense in the league. If not, it's a, it's a top five. And so you're not going to need to put up a bunch of points, hopefully, if you're the Washington football team. All those things combined. Will Terry McLaurin finish as a wide receiver one? The answer is you know it. Yes. Yes, okay. he will. Um, I, I have him ranked right now as a wide receiver one. He is my wide receiver 11. And obviously, if you're betting the entire field versus him, uh, the probability says he's going to be on the outside. But I think he's just shown, shown too many flashes of brilliance with horrific quarterback play. And really, truly, if you break that down further, not just a generic, um, well, you know, his quarterbacks haven't been good. Look at how he's performed with each different quarterback he's been with. Much, much worse with Alex Smith, who was checking it down over and over to J.D. McKissick and to you know the tight end Logan Thomas. Fitzmagic matches what mm -hmm. Terry McLaurin does, and Terry McLaurin is the locker room leader. Room, uh, the locker room leader. He he's going to be the number one guy for this team, and I think at the end of the season he'll be a wide receiver one. I will buy it, just barely. Oh, that's uh, a reluctant. He went from 28 to 21. I think he can get to 12 this year. I am curious, though. All the Jason laid it out pretty clearly, the situation. The target share last year is 25%. His consistency was great. It's just a matter of um, staying healthy and, you know, the consistency at the quarterback position over the course of a year, not going through multiple changes, which is not a guarantee with Ryan Fitzpatrick that there, there could be a change during the year, either by injury or play or uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, there are a lot of talented wide receivers that don't make it into the top 12 every year. Yeah. Making it into the top 12 is as much about durability and availability as it is, you know, that talent. And I think it'll come together for him. I've met 11 as well, Jason. So I noticed that, but I also noticed one I know, other thing. Andy. I know. 
Mike. You're the lowest. I have I him as a wide receiver one. Andy has him as a wide receiver one. And, uh, man, you hate Terry McLaurin down yeah. at 14. He's actually at 13 now. Oh, ooh. Uh, He's uh, still last, not top 12. Was that in the last, like, 20 seconds? No, not last 20 seconds, but last 20 minutes. Okay. And I, I'm... Because I was answering, looking at the show doc, preparing, and it's, I believe that Terry McLaurin is a wide receiver one. I firmly believe he should be there and and can easily finish there. So I made an adjustment in the rankings. I got him to 13, and I realized, yes, technically that's still outside, but this, at the beginning of the year, everyone's healthy. Everyone can, you know, perform. But the skill set is there. I mean, in Terry McLaurin, it's, it feels like it was not a, an, it was not an excellent season for him because it ended so terribly. Yeah, you've uh, made this case before talking about him playing through injury. Through through week 12, the the dude with multiple quarterbacks, multiple multi poor quarterbacks. Multiple bad quarterbacks was still averaging over 87 yards a game. The touchdowns were not coming, so that was the the big difference for his fantasy performance is he was still helping your team win. But he wasn't going over the top with those those big bomb touchdowns that we saw his his rookie year, and but then he he had an ankle sprain and then another one. By the end of the year, my man was playing on two ankle sprains, three and, ankle sprains. <laughs> wow. if, if it was possible, he would still be out there. So I, I think with uh, with him being healthy and the fact that yeah, Curtis Samuel he was a hundred for fifteen hundred pace through week twelve. That's yeah. not a small sample size. Not a lot of touchdowns, but 100 for 1,500 is going to get it done. And the argument for Curtis Samuel to me is completely neutralized by the addition of Ryan Fitzpatrick, who will target both of those guys, but he will target Terry, who is an elite route runner, has elite athleticism. Like He is everything you want in a wide receiver. Terry, I, I love Terry McLaurin, and he will finish as a top 12 wide receiver. Let me, let me help you, Mike. You've okay. got him at 13, and I know how to get him to 12. Okay. Get Kenny Galladay out of your move. top 10. Oh, no, that was how you that got him for 14. Yeah. Then I'm out of suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I went and I, that was, that's what I'm saying. Like when I was looking, I'm like, there's just, there's no way that you, when, would I, when I'm actually in a draft, I'm not drafting Kenny Galladay over Terry McLaurin unless I had already drafted like Antonio Gibson. Do I really want to go all in on the Washington offense? I'm not sure. Not that they can't, like, We've seen bad teams still produce a top twelve wide receiver and a top twelve running back, but so that that's a decision I would make. But if it's Gibson's out of the equation and it's just wide receiver, I would take Terry every single time. If you know, it's not like we're sitting here banging the table for a top five season for Terry McLaurin. We're just saying year three, better quarterback. He makes the leap uh, from twenty up to the eleven twelve range. It's also not impossible for him to be top five to me. Not impossible, but not probable. Sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, that was buy or sell from pristineauction.com. Be sure to use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit on some sweet sports memorabilia over there at Pristine Auction. They are not currently auctioning off any we, any glamour shots. We really should have had them auction off. It, we're, we're giving it away oh, for, for free. for charity or something? Yeah. Yeah, totally charity. <laughs> Mike wanted to make money off of his his NFL it is draft. Me. If anything, we auction. If we're going to auction it for profit, Jason and I split the money because yeah. we beat you in the draft. That's right. Now I'm on board. You get none of it. All right, news time. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Jay Grizz, a big fan of today's news. Uh oh. The Athletics, uh, Adam, uh, is it Johns, says that the Bears expect David Montgomery to surpass his 2020 rushing totals. I don't see why he couldn't. He has an extra game. Well, okay. He yes, better. But outside of, outside of averaging, um, I think the sentiment is he should be as good, if not better, than what we got last year. Which, which part of the year, though? Because uh, to be better than the first half of the year would be very easy for him. Well, let's say in totality, right? Like he, he, his final season totals thousand and seventy rushing yards. He said it, he specified his rushing output. So you're just talking about being a little bit more over the thousand yard pace, 
with that extra game and how bad he was to start the season, I, I think I agree with that. I mean, how bad he was to start the season is being overblown. The sentiment against Montgomery is being overblown. Yes, he had four games in the top in the beginning of the season where you say, okay, he wasn't a good start. One of them was a number seven finish, so he had three dumps. Okay, the fantasy purpose. And then he purpose. went hog wild for the rest of the entire season. Yes, but would you say that from weeks one through nine, averaging 3.6 yards per carry and 52 rushing yards, which so on a 17-game pace, that is under 900 rushing yards, you would say that's not bad? No, I would say that that's not at all reflective of the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly there's a balance yeah, there to be a had there. Different time period. <laughs> the, that but, was not reflective but, of the end. I have him down right happen. now for 1115 yards. So I agree, I agree. I agree like, with this uh, sentiment that he'll be better as a rusher in 2021 than he was for the totality of 2020. Yeah, I mean, but don't you see how subjective and unfair it is to just like I'm including myself in this. If you want to focus on weeks. Eight through sixteen, he's the best. If you want to focus on weeks one through two, like those should not be, those discussions should not be like points in my favor or in your favor. Like I choose to look at the first eight weeks as what he really is, and you choose, sure. you know, that's not a really good argument. Like I think the better argument is to say like he's by far the best runner on the team. He showed that yeah, uh, okay. throughout the year that he had. I mean, no one's had a stretch like that in years. Weeks 12 through 17 it outside of excellent. like CMC. Uh, the schedule was a little bit easier. But what does the team want to do in the backfield? And it's clear that what they wanted to do was what they did over the last part of the year. Well, That's the team. Yes and no. Um, I, I agree with you. They want to run the ball effectively, and that's what they did. But I don't think that what they want to do is just have one back completely shouldering everything. That was injury forced the issue where it was like, okay, are we going to Cordero Patterson back there uh, to be a running back because that's like our last option and now they, they obviously get Tariq Cohen back and they went and signed Damian Williams so there's uh, there are more bodies in the backfield than what happened the second half of last season that much is true and uh, I think that he is be I'm not projecting Montgomery to be a top what was he at the end of the year the number one running back over the last six games yeah I'm not projecting that at all yeah, and we but our, the our, sentiment out there is real stinky for Montgomery, and it is just it is a result of year one burns, Matt Nagy's magic, uh, yes, bag of tricks, and the bear sentiment. And I just think that we need to allow ourselves for a possibility that Montgomery is worthy of top five consideration in fantasy. I top five yeah, I would as a finish. I like, would not go there. Uh, but I mean, like if you look at our rankings, Jason ha or Andy has them the highest at sixteen. I'm the lowest at twenty. So, so our our difference of opinion on on Montgomery is not actually that wide. But uh, you're you're right, Andy. The sentiment on Montgomery is negative because he's a f mid fourth round pick. Let me just say that. Yeah, that's in the, historically that could, that could be insane. Could it could? But historically, those were that's where running backs go to die in the NFL draft, and they just submarine your team. Uh, but what I was saying is the the sentiment on Montgomery is negative uh, overall because for the majority of his career, which is very short, the year and a half has been a year and a half of Montgomery incredibly disappointing for what you were hoping for. Now you have six games where he was a league winning player, and if you had gotten him on your team at just the right time, you probably love David Montgomery. But he's. It, it, with with two years in, he to me would be far closer to the year and a half sample than though that six game sample. So that's why we I skew him more towards a mid range running back too. I think there's a bull and a bear case for Montgomery, but the majority are choosing the bear case. Well, he is on the Bears. That is a really good point, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Cole Komet uh, is is being reported by the Athletic as the bear who stood out most during OTAs. The ball always seems to find him, regardless he's, of who's at quarterback. He is – Cole Komet is interesting. Uh, when I was making laying out the case for Adam Trantman the other day of going through like tight ends that there's not a fully locked and loaded, solidified number two option. It feels like Darnell Mooney would be that guy, but that's not it, that's not locked in. Like Cole Komet could be the number two target yeah, on this team before Jimmy the Jimmy Graham end. could still be the number two sure. target. I mean, But your point is well taken that – 
you when you're looking for a breakout tight end, you want to find someone who could actually realistically become the number two target for that team. Yeah. Cole Komet could do that, so it's a name you need to monitor if you're in a dynasty league. Uh, he, he doesn't have a ton of value right now, and it's not like Cole Komet isn't like one of those tight ends where where people were just they were they it was believed, a second round pick. So, I right? know, but I'm saying in in fantasy rookie drafts, they didn't believe so much that they are holding on for dear life with their hands. You know, you'll you'll right. tear yeah, Cole Komet yeah. from my do cold dead hands. That's Dude, not happening. Cold dead hands. Ooh, <laughs> uh, nice. No, I don't like Cole Komet this year as a sleeper pick. I don't. Uh, Jimmy Graham was a five target a game tight end, still catches touchdown passes. It just feels like the situation where you're like. Uh, who, who is uh, Minnesota's tight end? Irv Smith. Irv, yeah. Where it's like, you know, a couple of years ago, you could get excited about the prospect, and here's Kyle Rudolph just lingering in annoyance. Um, yeah, I'd Or O.J. Howard when Cameron Brait was lingering in annoyance. Like, the odds are very low to me. Like, Cole Komet could be the two in your minds, but he could be the, I don't know, five, sixth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not out here... To Declaring some that, people that, love him. Some people Cole are Komet all about Cole Komet this offseason. But the 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 thing that was different to me of uh, when you, when you're talking like Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph is there was a uh, an actual tangible difference for Cole Komet. Like once Week Ten hit, he was going he was playing 30 percent of the snaps as a rookie, and then Week Ten hits, and he was the the tight end one on the team. Jimmy Graham is still getting those targets, but Jimmy Graham had reverted to a a part-time player where Colt Komet's on the field for the majority of the game. So it, it could $10 million Jimmy Graham next year. I, I <laughs> $10 million to have Jimmy Graham. Good work, Graham. Chicago. And he, and he, look, he ended the year with a highlight reel one-handed touchdown catch. I still think he's got value. Not Jimmy, for fantasy, for okay. the for, for NFL. I mean, if you can throw him that pass that Mitch Trubisky threw him and he can one-hand snag it in the end zone and put up six touchdowns, that's totally worth it for, for the NFL. And that's why he hasn't been cut. It's certainly not worth $10 million for the NFL. I mean, he's 34 going on 80, but uh, he can catch, you know, once you get inside the 20, that's that that brings downside to Cole Komet. All right. Yep. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fantasy growing, fastest growing <laughs> fantasy platform today. They, uh, it's a fantasy growth uh, situation. Uh, indeed it is. Before we move on to the mailbag, I want to today, thank today's sponsor, Helix Sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, what is one thing that we all actually have in common? We all go to sleep at night. We all have to go to sleep. I guess unless you're in that new, the new, uh, what, the Netflix show where people can't sleep anymore. And it's terrible. Those people, they're in a bad way. That's Cause, probably because they don't have a Helix. Because they can't sleep, so they need to get on a Helix sleep mattress. And Helix wants to help you out. You can jump on their website, and they have a quiz. It takes just two minutes to complete. It matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. I ran through the Helix quiz. I got a Helix Twilight because I'm a side sleeper. I like a firm mattress. And Helix, they've got they've got a mattress for you. Trust me. You, are you are you on uh, Team Hefty Boys over here with my man Jason? Yes, I am. <laughs> you're right. on, you're on your own on team. Your own <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I mean, Jordan was on the Bulls still. <laughs> I don't understand that. Not word. with Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> but but he wasn't on the team with the, Jordan. Jordan was on Jordan's team, right? <laughs> yes. The point is they have a mattress for you. They are awesome. Uh, they were awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 uh, by GQ and Wired Magazine. Head over to helixsleep.com slash footballers. Make sure you take that quiz. Get the customized mattress that you need. Get that 10-year warranty, and they're going to hook you up with a deal as well. They're offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash footballers. That's helixsleep.com slash footballers, $200 off and two free pillows. We were, we were out late watching a <laughs> basketball game. And, and Foot Clan, get the, get the most out of your summer travels this year by learning the language of your destination with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. Uh, it's great. You, you want to order things from restaurants. You want to be able to ask for direct directions, be able to uh, get a deeper understanding of the culture. Babbel makes the whole process of learning easier. I, I chose Spanish because we are in Arizona. It's not for my travels. It's just for being able to do exactly this, be able to talk about uh, ordering things at a restaurant, communicate with, with people who speak Spanish and not be a dummy. And the nice thing is, my favorite thing, you're talking about 15-minute lessons. 
I did not enjoy Spanish class. I dropped out of high school Spanish because high school classes suck. These 15-minute lessons from Babbel make kids it. Kids, stay in school, please. Uh, kids, stay in school. But <laughs> when you get out, you can get Babbel and actually learn from over 100 language experts, 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian. And there's all sorts of ways to do it, games, videos, stories, even live classes. Babbel is great. Right now, you can purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, and you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three Go to Babbel.com, use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code FOOTBALLERS for an extra three months free. All right, you guys ready for the mailbag? Let's go. Mailbag. Mailbag. If you have a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's jump into a voicemail. Hi, name's Cody. I've got a 12-man keeper league, half PPR, and I'm picking in the seventh spot. Do I keep Zeke or do I keep Travis Kelsey? Thanks so much. Love the show. And go Suns. 12-man keeper league, half point. Go Suns indeed. (sighs) That's a good point. Go Suns. Suns and four. But, man, Travis Kelsey. This is easy for me, so I'll let you talk, well, it's, it's not easy for me. I know. That's oh, why I, I make said. Make it easy for us, Jason. Yeah. It's easy for me because I still see, see Zeke as one of the top tier running backs. Okay. I see him not necessarily in the in the, the tip top tier of CMC and Dalvin Cook, but in the next group of really good uh, workhorse running backs who's going to get you know all the passes, all the rushes, uh, the goal line, super involved in the good offense. I, I still see Zeke that way. He was the running back three last season before Dak went down and then their offensive line got injured right now they look to be healthy Dak is back uh, you know you've got to call your shot on Zeke because he's dropping into That's the first true. round and you just have to decide because I complete I would not mind an argument someone else talking to me and say look he's dropped in his yards per care every year he's getting older he doesn't look like he has the same juice when he was younger that is I'm, I'm mouthing because I was like <laughs> the words that were going to come out of my mouth so you were saying I got what it. about I saw it. what about Tony Pollard. Yeah. There you go. I'll gonna, get the last one. So if, if you too. believe that the that you know the wheels are about to fall off on Zeke, then sure, go Kelsey. For me, I don't believe that. I think Zeke is I think there's still some tread on the tires. But it at seven is a tough spot to make this decision. I mean, um Let me ask you this. Let's say he he's finishes going at nine or so, so I'd probably take Zeke more times than I'd take Kelsey. If 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 Zeke were to finish as the running back six. Okay, so great, but not not one of the top three or four, but a really solid fantasy option. And Kelsey finishes as the tight end one, as expected. Which one helped your fantasy team more by the end of the year? Probably Kelsey. Zeke. I would think Zeke just from a depth and need at, at multiples at the at position. At number six. But if, Z- if Zeke finishes like 10 to 12, then Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, it's close. If I take Zeke at seven over Kelsey, I'm hoping. I, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm shooting my shot, hoping that. He could be top three. And if he finishes finishes at six, he didn't hurt me at all. He helped. I mean, he still helped my team. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably happy there, too. It's just uh, Kelsey's wonderful. Yeah, he is. He's he is a wonderful fella. I lean going with the running back. All right. Uh, Instagram from Jay Bench. How much money is too much money to pay for the glamour shot? $10,000. That's too much? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, Agree to disagree on that one. Well, I just, if it was an oil painting, you know, something done by hand. I mean, um, he will be autographing it. I know. Yeah. That's the problem. Like, it, Wait. I assume that lowers the value. When oh, my, man. No. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. I was going to say, just look at what, open your bank account, look at the number, whatever it, it, it adds up to, that's what you should spend. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to be given away for free. Well, it yeah, or <laughs> or or you could spend <laughs> money for it. Uh, for uh, we, I was someone had mentioned us that mentioned we should NFT that bad boy as well. Yeah, I mean, I think you're getting a little too high on the hog here, Mike. Yeah, I, you, I, you realize it was you lost. It was a punishment, this was, and this we've all lost. Yeah, I mean, no, it, it it started as a punishment, and now it's a, a delight and a, a privilege. treat for everyone. Yeah, this is why we're shipping this. Look thing at that guy out of here. He's looking great. Um, yes, you can win it at footclangiveaway.com <laughs> and pay $0. Uh, Just DM me. We do charge you 10000 for shipping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. 
<laughs> uh, Tyler Boyd question from John Mark Oden. He says, have we written off Tyler Boyd for the season? No, no. And I, I've got a really strong, concise argument as to why you shouldn't. And it's called Teddy Bridgewater and Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore. Uh, Joe Burrow's a better passer. Uh, the Bengals will throw the ball more. And Teddy still sustained three thousand yard receivers. So there's no reason why Cincinnati can't uh sustain three as well. So yeah. t t Tyler Boyd is probably going to be a bench depth value that you can rotate into your lineup if you need him. Yeah, I I can agree with that. He should but he should be viewed as a depth fantasy player. I mean the the, the addition of Jamar Chase is I mean there's just so many targets to in that and catchable targets, or I'm, I'm assuming that Jamar Chase is better than AJ Green uh, at yes. this point. Of yes, you are correct. correct. Thank you, uh, Jason. So, it, and him being Tyler Boyd being the slot player, it's you know shorter depth of target. Really has to re hit on yards after catch. The touchdowns are probably not going to be there. So, it, it Jamar Chase was a big downgrade for him, but he's still a good football player on a pass friendly offense so he's he's a solid depth player yeah I, I think it, when I look at Tyler Boyd it's a what kind of league is this if this is a three wide receiver full PPR then you know that that's where I care about a Tyler Boyd if this is a half PPR two wide receiver single flex I feel like Tyler Boyd's a player I'm going to pass over the entire draft because he is okay He's not going to go out there and just be irrelevant and not a part of the offense but he's probably not the guy I ever want to put in my starting lineup and you know hope that I'm getting Tyler Boyd or Corey Davis. That one's easy. That's Corey Davis. Yeah, he has the chance to be the one. Um, there's no chance for Tyler Boyd to be the the number one fantasy option for for his team. Tyler Boyd or Lavisca Chenault. Yeah, I mean, again, proven that's... a proven player who's already gotten paid because he's great, or the the hype. Uh, the hype, the hype, and the fluff pieces coming out of Jacksonville. That that's one where <laughs> with a rookie quarterback. Yeah. So this is kind of one of those fantasy philosophy things. If I had to bet money who finishes higher in fantasy football, I'd put my chips in on Tyler Boyd. But if I'm making a draft pick to say who do I want when I construct a roster, it's Lavisca Chenault because I want the chance that he pops or else get him off my roster versus having. What I think is, yes, he's a depth piece, but could also just be a roster clogging guy. Like that, Emmanuel Sanders for the past two years. Right, Where exactly. you drafted him saying, oh, and then you like just held him there and didn't play him. And, and he's okay. Like If he's on the waivers, you should pick him up. I mean, he's a good player. Not, no disrespect is, to yes. Tyler Boyd, the actual NFL player. He makes their team better. He's a good player. But I think what we're saying in a lot of words is that we don't see his upside. Last one. Tyler Boyd or Russell Gage? Oh, I like Russell Gage. Okay. Same reason, though, right? Yeah. The unknown. Uh, favorite sound effects question from Dan on YouTube. What's your favorite soundboard effect from the show? Uh, I will go. Are you going first? Basic and first. Mm. It is a classic. Yes. You know me. I'm. It's the classic, right? Vanilla ice cream over here. It, uh, I mean, it's it's not one of the originals, but we have. Mailbag would be, you know, up there. We have managed to take the number 55 and now, like, when, when you it's hear the, when now. you hear the number, you're like, "Oh yeah, fantasy football." What people don't know is that in that's our, our number in our Slack channel. If you happen to write the number fifty five yes. on accident, you're, on accident, yeah, like you owe me twelve dollars and fifty five cents. <laughs> yeah, and then a giant, like it automatically inserts a fifty five GIF. Yeah, and so you don't ever see it coming. I think I was putting some DeAndre Ayton <laughs> stat up last night in the Slack channel, and all of a sudden fifty five comes flying in. Uh, mine is a, an audio drop that some of the listeners hear every single week because it is our Foot Clan updates oh. drop during our footcast every Thursday. But if you are not part of jointhefoot.com, you get to hear it right now. Oh. Foot Clan updates. That's yeah. a good one. That is nice piece of music. Something familiar like, about that. Very, very good content. Something, I just can't I just, quite I just, place it. Just I went with you know some classical 
stuff. So you, you it I just, know, just I, came I to you. Know. Don't overthink it. it. Okay. Do not overthink it. it. I thought we were just going with like the sound bites for the mm. the players, but I mean, I got a snake, man. <laughs> with the, the the origin of that happening when, when Andy was gone, and I forced it on the soundboard, and then the calling of shot of like you're going to stream Blake Bortles throughout the fantasy playoffs, and it's going to feel so terrifying. And then Blake Bortles came through, man, in a big way in those final three games. He had a snake, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think I know your answer on this one, but it's an Instagram question from James Grayson. He says, does Clyde still have the upside we thought he had going into last year? Yes. I believe 100% he does. I think that he can be far more involved in the passing game and that touchdowns can go his way – uh, when they didn't last year, uh, I I don't project that. I, my projection is pretty much how he finished last year. But when I'm looking at him or others in that range, I often select him because I do think his range of outcome is very, very high still. Number one? Probably not number one. I don't think that he is the center of that offense, and you need to be you know, a CMC, a Dalvin Cook. The You need to be the main engine that runs the train, and he's not for it. it, it that's Mahomes' team. Do you think you had that same thought when he was drafted? Yeah. That yeah, he couldn't I, be a number one or number two? Yeah, I think last year I, I saw him as kind of that that 5 to 15 range running back. Okay. Yeah, All I right. think top five. I wouldn't project him beating out McCaffrey or Dalvin when they're healthy. But the, I, I mean, you're, you're going to be on likely to be the highest scoring offense in the league. And if that touchdown variance just – bounces in his favor this year like where we have seen that for uh like for Aaron Jones and Alvin Kamara where it, where it just I, hits the right way and, and they score a whole bunch of rushing touchdowns guys getting dragged down on the one it happens I think I've said it earlier this offseason this is the year of of defining what Clyde Cannon will be for the rest of his career because my concern is that he will never receive the workload needed to enter that upper echelon. And I think we'll know definitively this year what the team believes. It's like the Miles Sanders situation last year. Like we came in and they're like, oh, hype, 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 hype. He's the right. three down back, three down back, three down back. <clears throat> what do you think about Miles now? What's his ceiling? His ceiling's not what you thought it no, was. No, no, it is not. So I think this year will define, if we see tons of Daryl, if we see tons of uh, you know other players out there, I think that... Um, which I think is a possibility that they don't want to give Clyde as much work as a McCaffrey or a Cook or a Zeke or Mixon or somebody like that. Um, that's what we'll learn this year. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, but in, in the end, I think it will just simply come down to touchdowns because it reminds me a lot of LaShawn McCoy when he was with Andy Reid. Andy Reid, you know, it's like LaShawn McCoy would have four rushing touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. And then sandwiched between those three numbers was a 17 rushing touchdown. Exactly. Season. The touchdown variance, we talk about that not being the stickiest of stats. You can't always predict who's getting the touchdowns as easily as you can the targets, the volume, the yards. And if those things fall his way on a high-powered offense, he's going to be great. All right. Instagram question from Beyond, Beyond Garcia, and they want to make us choose. Uh, they want to make Jason choose here. Half point per reception keeper league. Keeper league. Antonio Gibson or Cam Akers? Antonio Gibson or Cam Akers? Um, I'm going to go Cam Akers. I believe that he will be more involved. I like both players. I do think that Antonio Gibson might be safer. Um, but if, I, if I'm if i picking, uh, I'm picking Cam. Uh, I want to hear where you two stand on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I lean the Cam side. I think the – I lean the Cam side. I will take Antonio Gibson, but I I don't blame you, Jason. I'm like, if everything hits right, then Cam Akers to me can be a top three running back. If everything hits right for for Antonio Gibson, I don't I don't see that. Like I, he's still incredible. I mean, like a top seven type of a running back. But the way that McVeigh has already proven he will use a running back, I I mean, I don't I don't know that Gibson will get that. He could, I guess, with uh. Rivera talking about him re referring to him as a Christian McCaffrey type of a, a talent, uh, but I but I guess just probability wise to me, if both hit, Cam Akers would finish higher. 
Let's turn to a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. This is Alex from South Carolina. Just kind of curious how you would go about removing kickers and defenses from a dynasty league and a way to propose that strategy to those who are against it. Love the show. Appreciate it, guys. That's hard. That is re- It's yeah. really hard in a dynasty league to remove something like that. Transactions have been made, um, especially with defenses. Defenses last forever, right? You, you know, your kicker can retire. Eventually, those players will get cut from their team. But the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be around. They and will that, never retire. They will never retire. And so I almost feel like like I am anti-defensive kicker in Dynasty. I would Every Dynasty I've started up, we've had no defense, no kicker. I love it. Just add more flex. But I don't know that I would make the change here. I, th- I think there's a way to do it. Let's hear it. It's a three-year um it's a phase out plan. Three year phase out in, in the sense that, like, what you're saying is right. Transactions have been made. But if you give people, like, a three season, like, here's what we're going to do, or a couple of years. Here's what we're going to do in a couple of years. Everybody can be on the same playing field. Everybody can make adjustments over the next couple of years to know that these are phasing out. And it can be part of introducing another flex as well. It can be part of a transition in the league. That's how I would approach it is all you want is nobody in the league to feel like they're getting less than. And a long enough time period of transition will hopefully, you know, allow that to happen. But it's hard. It's a, infinitely harder than a redraft yeah, league. And maybe you just start with getting rid of kickers, leaving defenses so that it's, you know, less. If you're if you're wondering, how do I get this to be accepted by my league? Maybe start small instead of saying, we're going to get rid of all of those ancillary pieces. And if you start small, the nice thing is, like, you're just starting with kickers. You say, okay, we're going majority vote or maybe super majority vote, um, but there's only one team with Justin Tucker. So, you know you know how that vote's going to go, but he right. doesn't matter um, unless you need a unanimous vote. What if you, uh, Jason, what if you move from, like, one defense, one kicker to, like, two kickers? Yeah, what if you go the other way? What if you go a double kicker league, but I, you pull the defense out? I triple want, kicker. I, I feel like the league – I care about the league's health, like their mental health and, uh, and their happiness, their joy. So I would I would recommend against that because that would suck and make them unhappy. Mm. What if you were in a super kicker league? Oh, a super kicker league? Where, like, where they're disproportionately strong. Well, th- th- honestly, that's just called uh, touchdown-only leagues that have kickers where kicker that is, points. Honestly, that is true. if you've ever played in a touchdown-only league, like a full roster touchdown-only, go ahead, take your kicker in the third round, man. Yeah. They're going to outscore most of those players. <laughs> they will. Um, let's go to Chris Gardner. He says, Dynasty Superflex question. Do I trade Aaron Jones now? Dun, 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 dun. I, you traded Devontae Adams now. I did trade so, Devontae Adams, and I would say this. I did not look to get rid of Devontae Adams at any cost. I was not going to just say, I don't believe Aaron Rodgers is coming back. You so were trying I'm, very hard, though. I was shopping. I was definitely shopping around, <laughs> and I started at the top. You know, it's like if I if I know I could trade him for, um, you know, a, a tip-top option, if I could trade Devontae Adams for CMC, I would have done it because I couldn't get that trade. So you just start at the top, work your way down. I was able to get Ezekiel Elliott and a first-round pick, I felt like that was enough. So if you're wanting to shop Aaron Jones, feel free. But I, I guess I would just not recommend trading him on the cheap. Oh, I know why. By the way, I know why uh, Brooks did that trade. Yes, the trade was with Brooks. So he was the other side of the Zeke first round. And the reason he did that trade is because I looked at his dynasty team today and his wide receiver court in a double flex, two wide receiver league is DeAndre Hopkins, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, and Keenan Allen. Yeah, it's real, real nice. And I'm, I'm looking back and going, well, Jason won his two titles in that league, and he won it on the back of a powerhouse four wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And Brooks obviously hasn't been able to get through me in our division, so that's been a challenge, so he's trying to find something new. Doing whatever I can. Yeah. 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 Um, but it, dude, Brooks and I should do a little like glamour shot bet over who's got the best record at the end of this year. Yeah, you should. <laughs> no, we shouldn't. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but no? It, for Aaron Jones, real quick, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with Jason that this isn't a trade at all costs, but you, we fall in love with these players, and we fall in love with running backs because of what they are doing, but that window is so small. And Aaron Jones is already on the second contract. Like his shelf life 
in the NFL as an elite level running back, even if even when even if Rodgers comes back, is not that long. So yeah, it's it, it, it's it might be better to get out earlier than later, especially when you factor in the Rodgers situation. But what if you're not getting a premium because of the Rodgers situation? You're not if, selling them for fifty cents on the dollar, right? If, if you're not getting a, a premium return in the trade, then I'm not going to let do me, it. Let me help color in a little bit more of the picture for Aaron Jones. This upcoming year, his cap hits four point four, right? It's nine in twenty twenty two. It jumps. I mean, the out, the potential out for Aaron Jones, the probable out for Aaron Jones is two more years in Green Bay, and he's gone. And what's the dead cap the, at the, that point? The dead cap hit. In two years? In 2023 is going to be... Well, his dead cap's 6'5", but his cap hit's 19'2". Yeah, okay. so, that, so he'll So be the cut. jump is from 9 to 19. So if you're thinking, what's the likelihood? You're playing the gamble on two more years of Aaron Jones plus the Aaron Rodgers scenario, which could be one more year, could be two more years, it could be zero. So 80 cents on the dollar. <laughs> Got it. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Aaron Jones could win you a title this year. And yes, you could he be, could. And then... We, he could give you the, oh, crap, I got one more year of Raheem Mostert, but I don't care if I win the title. Figure it out later. It could be. All right. Uh, Najee versus Chase. Uh, Nolan on Instagram. Oh, I have Joe Burrow in my dynasty league. And the first pick in the rookie draft, do I go Chase or Najee? So this is like the um, situation the Bengals were in, going Sewell or Chase, but Ex you've got Burrow on your team. Exactly. Ask yourself, do you want to manage your team? the way that the Cincinnati Bengals <laughs> manage their team because they should not have taken Chase and neither should you. I would take uh, Jamar Chase, hands down. I would still take Najee Harris. All right. Uh, YouTube question <laughs> from Tristan. What do you think about the idea of taking off the position of tight end and just adding an extra flex? I'm fine with that. I, I am. I'm I'm not opposed. That was a I, fart sound effect that I did with my mouth. No, I get it. I mean, it's what we've done with kickers. We got rid of kickers and added an extra flex, and, and that's Why not nice. all flex, then? No, I've, I've played in those leagues, and there are fun strategies there, but it's not as fun as your normal league. So, I mean, that's really what this is about. You want strategy, right? Super flex leagues are becoming more and more popular because it adds more strategy to the quarterback position. Uh, getting rid of tight end because tight end is difficult. I I, I agree with Andy's fart to a degree. Um, that that you agree um, with to Andy's a degree with the fart. I yes. agree to a degree no, I of like the that. fart. Thank you. Jason. Um, you're welcome. Because you didn't like some of the arguments of the fart. I don't like just completely discounting it. Like I this. Think, right. Right, like the first part of that. See okay. how there was like the, a when it when it juiced out at the end. You right, were with that? No, the first part was fine, but the juice at the end was disgusting. <laughs> the juice was too loose. Here's what I'm saying: is that if you're going to do this, allow tight ends to be in that flex, so of that course. way you're still drafting your Kelseys, your Kittles, your Wallers, all those guys, mixing them in with tight ends, allowing strategy to still be there. Don't just get rid of all tight ends. Um, and and I am fine with that. I don't, but I wouldn't set my league up that way. Correct. And I I don't enjoy leagues like I've played in a ton of them where it's like one one running back, one wide receiver that are locked, and then it's like you know three or four flex. And I don't enjoy that as much. I mean, I think part of what the navigation is is the strategies of positions and trading for positions, and like the trade market right. is completely different if you're trying to position yourself to strengthen or, or you know a position so yeah there be like, there will be three maybe four tight ends played in this league yeah right I mean, like we're all excited for what what could Kyle Pitts become what could, could TJ Hawkinson really break out for the tight end position There's, will Dallas Goddard you right. know come through on the promise of his be, draft it could be less if you don't have a very deep roster or a deep league you could have some of the big guys not playing. Kelsey and Waller would play. Probably. Kittle, Kittle yeah. would play. Probably. And Unless he did you say have, adding if you a got, flex. Yeah, yeah. If you've got better running backs or wide receivers, you might not. Right. Um, all right. Instagram, Dakota says, should I draft Michael Carter or Tevin Coleman first? Carter. Michael Carter. This is a perfect example of the Tyler Boyd situation. Who you know who who's who's the starter? Tevin Coleman. What's his upside? There isn't one. <laughs> 
I mean, it's we're a, back it, to it, that it, argument, it, right? Well, see how I just did. I the liked first the part. whole part of that. Yeah, because I didn't do the the second <laughs> juice part. Um, yeah, but the upside is there with Michael oh my Carter. Gosh. We still got it, boys. <laughs> We still got the magic. A thousand plus shows in. We you're not stopping a good fart joke. Yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Not when I the, am. Not when the sun's are on a run like this. Oh, no, baby. Speaking of fart jokes, make sure you listen to the Spitballers podcast. Right. Our other podcast that is entirely fart the jokes. The ratio goes way up. <laughs> it's pretty much fart jokes. Uh, I heard Brooks even watched some suns. What? Ooh. Yeah. Just for you guys. Oh, Just for All us. Right. I love you I too. I know. Look, it's been hard to constrain it because everybody out there that's a fan of sports of any kind, when your team's on a roll, when the whole world is watching, it is very fun. But if you don't care about that team, the other people are just annoyed at you. And we've got the microphones in front of us. And we know that it might be annoying. Let but, us have but this let, moment. Look, I think what's happening and what I choose to believe because I keep talking about it is that our joy is transcending their is. lack of a local fandom for the Suns. I, I totally believe in that. And so they are joyful because we are joyful. Come on in. Come on. The bandwagon is open. Oh, yes. We accept all. all. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, it was real empty over the last <laughs> 10 years. There's plenty of room. The seats are fresh. The, the yeah. cushions are not worn in. No, no. Every Everything is is uh, A-OK -okay in uh, on Planet Orange. So... Uh, welcome, and that'll do it for today's episode of the show. And we'll be back. We will be. With three shows a week next week. Oh, brother. FootClanGiveaway.com if you want to win the Glamour Shot. Or just $10,000 to my bank account. Yeah, that's an option. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.